What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here, and thanks for checking out this Fallout 76 video. Recently, Bethesda released plenty of information over the new legendary vendor that's going to be in the game, and how we're going to be able to purchase the 1 star, 2 star, or 3 star legendary gear that you'll have. Which I am excited for this to enter into the game. We're going to be able to dismantle legendaries inside this legendary exchange to get legendary script to eventually purchase these legendary rewards that the purveyor has. At the end of this article though that they released with all this information, they talked about this new project that they have coming up in patch 9.5. It will be a repeatable event in the game called Project Paradise. Now what's interesting about this to me was how they spotlighted this event. It seems like they have big plans for this. So when I saw this, I immediately wanted to research a little bit more about it because this sounded really interesting to me. And when I did a little bit more research, I found out that there was some data mined information over it. Now these are going to be some major spoilers that I'm about to be sharing with you all, but they are extremely interesting. Anyways, the Reddit user that goes by the Gemini recently provided us with a load of data mined information. Now this data mined information does seem like it's going to be accurate because he mentioned what the Sheep Squatch was going to be like before it even released. The variance that it was going to have, the event free range that we were able to encounter it at as well. Just a load of information that this person got correct. So I thought it'd be worth it to share the information that this person has over the Project Paradise. And it seems like to get this started, the Project Paradise is going to be taking place over at the Arctos Pharma Lab, which is located here on the map. The Reddit user that data mined all this information and shared it with us mentioned that Project Paradise was his favorite piece of content coming in the future. And he said, as by the looks of it, it seemed both challenging and interesting. It's going to be a high level area hosting, once again, the event Project Paradise and has lots of cool stuff within it. Now, to get started with what's going to be inside of it, we're going to be starting off with a little bit of the story. The story is Arctos Pharma was trying to make a perfect habitat for life to coexist, and the project to do so was called Project Paradise. Along the way, they attempted to create several serums that would pacify animals and allow them to coexist. They also performed experiments on animals to achieve all this, sometimes turning them into mutated and dangerous versions. The place where these experiments happened was called the Chasm. Unfortunately, after the bombs fell, communications with the outside world went silent and the scientists below sent out scouts to the surface to see what happened. Soon after they opened their doors, a horde of ghouls was able to enter the facility and started terrorizing the scientists within. And in an attempt to modify the security system to target ghouls, the targeting protocols were removed and the automated security throughout the facility targeted humans as well, killing everyone inside the facility. Somehow the security system was taken down and replaced though with an ordinary robot, who since then keeps on trying endlessly to complete Project Paradise. He eventually sends out a distress signal and has the 76 dwellers, us, help him complete the project. So that's a little bit about the story of Project Paradise. Something else interesting inside Arctis Pharma that we can't exactly use at the moment, but it's there and we were able to see it and pick it up. As you can see, if you just take the route that I just took and head inside this area of the facility. Oh, what the fudge? Hang on a minute. Got a bunch of these feral ghouls on me. But yeah, if you come over here to this shelf, you will notice that there are some recipes on this shelf. And we are not able to use these at the moment. As you can see, creature attractant recipe, creature deterrent recipe, growth enhancer recipe, and growth suppressor recipe. These sound extremely interesting, but once again, as you can see, when you go to pick them up, Oh, what the? They will all be located inside your miscellaneous. See? Growth enhancer recipe, growth suppressor recipe, creature deterrent recipe, and creature attractant recipe. Really weird, but they sound extremely interesting, and they also seem to kind of correlate with the data miner's description of the story over Project Paradise. Yeah, the data miner also gave us information over the gameplay of how this event is going to play out. It's going to have multiple stages and we'll first have to defend groups of animals against waves of enemies coming from the chasm. So that sounds really cool. And we'll eventually have to deliver the enemies to the correct habitats. 
Secondly, we'll have to deliver the correct foods and formulas to the correct animals. And these two stages, the data miter mentioned, seem to be broken into smaller individual pars, so the events will ring true to a more traditional dungeon. This actually seems like a really challenging dungeon. I am already loving that there's going to be different mechanics that we have to do to take on to progress further into it to get our reward, whatever the reward may be. Heck, who knows? It could be like a nuke silo where, you know, at the end of a nuke silo, we're able to, you know, destroy a certain part of the map. This could be something different. Like when we get to the end of this, we could chain react something around the world differently. Maybe revitalize it. I don't know. That would be pretty cool rather than just getting some rewards at the end. I mean, after all, this was an experimental researching facility. They were researching here different flora, animals, and mutations. And honestly, there might be even more. That's just all I know of off the top of my head. Anyways, also the data miner mentioned that we are getting new plants and items from this. For instance, the ones that I just showed you. And also he mentioned the rad kelp and other unnamed chems and plants that he seems to be unfamiliar with. Also something to note is he had mentioned the Arctos dungeon is the one shown in the Wild Appalachia trailer aside from the burrows. So this right here what a lot of players have been curious about seems to be a part of Arctos Dungeon. Whether how true this is, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but he did get everything correct about the Sheep Squatch, which was pretty insane. So I don't doubt this data miner whatsoever with the information that he provided. I mean, he spent a long time typing all of this. It'd be pretty crazy of him to just type out some kind of elaborate lie for us just to waste our time reading. You have to be extremely bored to do something like that. Like. What in the world? Come on now. But yeah, anyways, the data miner also mentioned as for when this comes, he thinks that it might be coming after Ever Upwards, just as the burrows came after Sheer Terror. So when he mentioned this, I immediately thought about the Inside the Vault article that Bethesda provided us with, because at the end of it, Bethesda mentions about Patch 9.5 coming later this month, and they talk about how there's going to be a new repeatable event to the game called Project Paradise. And I will mention for a fact, it does seem like this data miner is correct on his information because you can see the Arctos Pharma logo in the background of a short glimpse of Project Paradise in action, I believe. Because as you can see, this is like the only place that we have not experienced yet in the Wild Appalachia DLC that we got teased in the very beginning of all this content. And if this is the case, I am extremely excited for this to come out. Like this is something that I've been interested in ever since I seen this little scene happen in the trailer. I've been wanting to experience this. And it's also cool to know that this is going to be a new repeatable challenging dungeon to grind with, I'm assuming, good rewards because it's really getting hyped up. Hopefully it actually lives up to its hype and Bethesda can actually get more players back over to Fallout 76. I will be doing a complete review over this when it officially comes out because I'm extremely excited to see how it all plays out. But anyways, that's enough about Project Paradise. I have a feeling a lot of players are going to be spending a lot of time grinding this event. I can already see it now. This is going to be the new thing to do in Fallout 76. Anyways, now I want to get into a little bit more over the Legendary Vendor that's going to be coming here soon in the game as well. And this is something else I'm extremely stoked to see. So first things first, I wanted to get into a little bit more information of what the data miner provided us with. The person figured out that the legendary vendor will actually be moving locations to different spots. She won't just technically be at Berkeley Springs. As you can see, here's the coding. And the first one says legendary vendor marker Berkeley Springs 01. So of course that one's for Berkeley Springs. But you can also see one that says the winding path, Point Pleasant, Tanagra Town, Top of the World, Watoga, Wavy Willards, Monorail Elevator, and New River Gorge. It seems like those will also be areas that she'll spawn at too. So yeah, I'm actually really interested in seeing how this exactly plays out. Like, is she just gonna switch up her spot every so week or something? Is that how this is gonna work? Kind of like how Zer worked, if you're familiar with Destiny. Zer only came on the weekends and sold us exotic gear and had exotic gear for us to trade. And we had to use a specific currency, which was strange coins, in order to get this gear that Zer sold. So it seems the purveyor may be working very similar to him, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Anyways, in case you don't know much about the legendary vendor, how we're going to be able to purchase what she has for sale, we're going to have to exchange our legendaries for script, which script is the currency that we have to use to purchase stuff from the purveyor, which is the legendary vendor. And how we can get this script is by putting a legendary 
inside this legendary exchange machine. Of course, keep in mind, three stars will give you more script than one stars. But yeah, this is how we're going to be able to get our currency to get this legendary loot from the purveyor. And it seems like it's going to be a huge gambling system. You're not going to know for sure what you're going to get. You will know, though, that it's going to be at least a three star. As you can see, the first glimpse that Bethesda introduced us to over the purveyor's inventory goes like this. It'll have one star legendary loot worth 15 to 25 script. It'll also have two stars that'll be ranked from 30 to 50 script. And lastly, it'll have three stars ranking from 60 to 100 script. Also, we'll have a choice at choosing a three star mystery pick. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work, but as you can see, it's worth 65 script. I'm assuming this is just going to reward us with a possible three star legendary armor piece, a three star legendary melee weapon, or a three star legendary ranged weapon. Basically the possibilities that we have to get. But uh, yeah, I guess that's about wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you found this enjoyable, and in this you learned something new that's going to be coming to Fallout 76. I have to say, the future is looking really bright for this game. Bethesda is really picking up the slack that they had in the beginning. I'm assuming all the negative press that they got made them work a little bit harder, which I definitely respect them of that, if that's the case, because, you know, reputation is very, very important. But yeah, I'm out of here, everyone. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. Until next time, peace.